everyone. Welcome to the Influence Women's webinar tonight. We are so happy that you are here with us tonight and so excited to have our special guest speaker with us tonight, Jody Swee. Jean Kristen, our Influence Women COO, is in the chat room as well tonight. And so we're thrilled to have her with us. So get ready to send in some great questions to her. Well, I want to just uh, briefly go over some of the things that are happening here with Influence Women and what's happening with our events. We're having a great webinar, of course, tonight, but we'll have another one coming up on August 1st, um, Creating with God's in, uh, Creating with God with um, uh, actress, writer, producer, Amanda Mees. Um, she will also be starting then a mentorship uh, on that title and uh, about how to create um, with God's infusion in your life, a full six-week mentorship starting on August 21st. So you don't want to miss our next webinar where you're going to begin to see and hear about how she is going to be teaching this great series and mentorship series for us coming up. And, um, and start creating with God. Start having him infuse incredible, creative, artistic things into your heart and mind so that we can then resonate who he is in our lives. It's exciting to be a part of this um, organization, Influence Women. We know that many of you right now are struggling, having some challenges right now. The SAG after strike has just been declared today. So we are keeping the, all of you who are SAG after and those of you who are in uh, the Writers Guild of America, who's been striking now for around two months, in our prayers. We know that um, this is a stressful time for you, and we know that God's got your back. So uh, if you need to reach out to us for some prayer and some uh, support, let us know. You can always reach us at info at influencewomen.org. We want to be here for you to pray for you. We also know that the Hollywood Prayer Network is available. And, and if many of you don't have a prayer partner at this point, let us know. We'd love to connect you with the Hollywood Prayer Network and connect you with someone who can pray with and for you on a regular basis. Um, we believe in prayer and we believe that it works. So uh, come along and, uh, and don't feel isolated or depressed. God is in it and he's doing some great things. And so we're going to look for the opportunity that God's going to open up for us as producers, writers, and directors during this time that we might not have had, had uh, these strikes not happened. I know he's in it and for you. So uh, stay hopeful and stay connected with God. So important. Um, so tonight, we're so excited to have Jody Swee with us. And of course, Jean, again, is in the, yeah, the chat room. So make sure your chat room uh, is on and that you're sending in some great questions. We're going to choose one woman from the chat room tonight to win a, a mentorship to uh, Amanda Mises' upcoming mentorship program, um, Creating God um, in Your Life and cre Creating God uh, with His Infusion. So uh, if you would like to be a, a part of that and would like to win that um, mentorship, let us know in the chat room and um, stay tuned as we uh, have a great conversation here with Jody coming up on um, what it's like to be single in the city, assessing who you are and where God wants to take you, where you want to go. Um, God is in your singleness and he's in whether or not you have, are married or single. And we know that God's identity doesn't lie in ourselves or our identity doesn't lie in ourselves, but in him. So um, we're going to explore this topic. I know so many of you are single out there and feel a little frustrated over why you can't connect with that certain someone. Tonight, we're going to kind of unravel that tonight with, a, with an expert who's been uh, speaking and teaching on this for some time and has some great wisdom for you. So uh, again, our next webinar will be on August 1st with Amanda Mees. Um, we will also have an in-person Hollywood event, the Inspire event at Alexandra Boylan, a producer director's um, home here in Hollywood on August 28th. That will be going up on the website in this next week where you can register. So be looking for that. Also, uh, we want to thank Dr. Donna Marie um, for being a part of our last mentorship. They're wrapping up on the life wheel. Thanks so much, Donna Marie, for your um 
your help and work and um, helping us grow within our uh, careers and our work tonight. Okay, so um, we need to get to it. We've got a great guest waiting in the wings. Let me share with you a little bit about who Jody Swee is. Jody is a spiritual director, dating coach, and founder of Topanga Social, a holistic dating service that integrates the meta modern social and spiritual experience. Her purpose is to love Jesus and point others to his love every chance she gets. Jody's favorite way to do this. Are, is through Bible study. And she also hosts great conversations that create space for the Holy Spirit to transform our understanding and experiences. She's authored four Bible study series and shared her joy and authenticity with audiences for over 20 years. Jody lives in the South Bay area of Los Angeles with her husband of 15 years, their two daughters, a dog, and two cats, and with a revolving door of friends and visitors. It's a zoo, she says, but she loves it. Find out more and look for a free and, and sign up to have a free session with Jody at jodyswee.com. Again, jodyswee.com, J O D I E S W E E, jodyswee.com. Jody again will be getting ready and doing a mentorship with us in the fall. So look for that. She wants to um, invest in your life. She wants to see you content and doing all the things that God's called you to do successfully. So we're thrilled tonight to have Jody with us. Welcome, Jody. Hi, Jody. Hi. How Hi, are you? I'm good, Kathleen. Thanks so much for having me here tonight. I'm so glad to be here. Hi, uh, we're so glad to have you here. We're just thrilled to death. You know, Jody, the reason we wanted to do this particular webinar is because when we um, did a survey with our followers, we found that about 75% of them are single. Mm. And we know that many of them from events and, and places we've, we've been hosting over the past few years with influence women, that they feel a bit frustrated. And um, many of them would like to find that certain someone, but for some reason, they're just not connecting. And so we want to kind of unpack that with you tonight. And we know that you're an expert at this, that you've been studying this for a while. But um, I read your bio, but that just kind of gives us a little, you know, general stuff about you. Tell us about just who you are, how you got into this, and why you're so passionate about this particular subject. Yes, uh, I know the bios are so funny. It's like, oh, we, there's so much stuff into that, and you can't, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I realized, I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I could make that briefer, more briefer, more brief. That's the word. Um, so, yes, I really fell into the, I don't even want to say I fell into it, but as I was just being obedient to God and following where he took me, I, it, it's amazing how I got on this journey. So I started out as I worked for Young Life, which is a high school outreach ministry. I was an area director um, and pastored high school and young adults for almost 20 years. And in 2017-ish, um, I felt the Lord was asking me to follow my kids into adulthood. And so I just, so I just kind of followed them into adulthood. And I went into it thinking I was going to do, I was going to write Bible studies. I was going to be a spiritual director and I was going to just, you know, be able to just be with my people as they grew. But it turns out that my people we're not super interested in, a, in spiritual direction and Bible study. I mean, they are, but they were like, but we're too busy trying to figure out what we're doing with our lives and who we're going to marry. And so I was like, fair, that's fair. And so I, um, my heart has always been the entire time, no matter what my job title has been, my heart has always been helping people connect their real lives with a, with the transformational love of Jesus. So having real conversations about what's actually happening and how we can connect that to the transformational love of Jesus. So I, that's always been what I wanted to do and what I did. So it's just like, okay, so what we need to be able to, I needed to find something tangible, like an actual, like let's, what's happening right now that they are worried about that we can help them figure out how to connect their lives to. And it's like, well, obviously dating, which is so funny because I wish my husband had been telling me forever that I should talk about dating because I have always, I've spoken on it, but it had never been part of my coaching 
stuff. And um, I realized that it, I was like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I started doing that one. And then this is the crazy part. So <laughs> I was in a, a certification class for coaching. So a lot of life coaches have are certified. And so I was going through some training and I met somebody who was a matchmaker. And I was like, what to tell me more I thought that was just something that was in the movies and on <laughs> Bravo like I didn't think yeah, that marvelous was Mrs. Maisel has a matchmaker this is what yes. her her uh, mother is a matchmaker her right mother <laughs> yes and so I was just like tell me more and so I ended up um I ended up working for this matchmaking company for two years and so I had this opportunity to spend this time I was a dating coach um, with the heart of a pastor. And then I got to see just like match, like dating in real time. And so I kind of have this wide swath of these experiences to go, okay, here's where we're getting stuck. And here's how we can start to move through it. And so that was part of the process and how I got here. So awesome. and here I am. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're here and we're glad that you are a modern day matchmaker in many ways, but a matchmaker that is grounded in the word and in what the and what the Lord wants for us best, first and foremost in our lives. So I love that. Um, I love that there is a purpose in what you're doing and it isn't just to connect people together and match make them together. You know, but Jody, um, often when I've talked to single women or men in that, in, in any case, both, uh, both genders, um, they've said, don't call me single. It's a, it's a label. It's almost like a bad word for them. They, they feel like they're being labeled and, and it's a kind of a guilt word for them. That's there's must be something wrong with them because they're still single. Um, and so is single a bad word? I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you gauge that in our culture today? Uh, yes, single is a bad word. And it's not, it's funny when I was thinking about this question earlier, I almost, I was really wrestling with, I want to say it's almost a profane word in our culture, meaning we, it's, it's meant to, it's like a, a less than word. So it is, you know, whether it's in, and not even intentionally, like I, even looking at like the church, which is trying to love people. And genuinely, I think most churches really want to love singles well, right? But we still have a tendency to treat like, oh, they're single like they haven't made it to what they're you know and so yeah yeah they're singled out aren't they they're judged yes because they haven't achieved being married like that's supposed to be the big goal right Right. is to be married right you know talk about you know let's talk about what paul says though about being single right you know he was content and knowing that the single life for him was really the best choice and, um, and so, you know, let's talk then, let's kind of unpack this a little bit more. Why are so many people finding it so difficult to find those lasting relationships and that marriage connection today? Uh, yes. So I, I, I talk to clients about this a lot because, and I tell them, I'm like, they're like, dating is really hard for me. And I get to tell them, I'm like, it's not you. We are in a really unique time in culture, which has where dating has really just been like exploded. Like it's not working. People do not know how to date at all. And so we're dealing with a lot of different issues created by our cultural conditioning. So which means we have um, our we had we experience things as a generation, like generationally, we experience things which create our expectations. And so what this generation of single people, you know, people in their 20s, 30s, 40s specifically, um, are their experience has conditioned them to pursue life in a way through things like, you know, just like with social media, with the things that they we've heard in culture, like they're, they have been conditioned to do things like on apps, how Kathleen, how many seconds do you think that somebody takes before making a decision whether to swipe left or right? How many seconds do you think it is? Oh, less than a second, I would say. I, I know that I know statistics tell us that between seven and eight seconds when we're in person with someone, we decide whether or not we're gonna pay attention and follow them. So I know when you're swiping, it's got to be a second or less, correct? 
correct. It is one yeah. second. And yeah. it, so, and that's part of our conditioning. We've been conditioned to look at somebody and make it an, you know, an assessment and decision, and right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and let's be honest. I mean, granted we are in the industry and so there are a lot of beautiful people, but most of us need more than a second to show our attractiveness, right? So like no one is served well by this one second thing that we've got going. So that's just one example of how our cultural experience has created this kind of world where it's really hard to date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things I was talking about um, today with my personal assistant who's single, um, was the fact that there's so many distractions today too that are actually keeping us apart and actually hardening our hearts. You know, the Bible talks about hardening of our hearts. We become, um, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, a rock unto ourselves. Basically, we are an island unto ourselves, and um, yet at the same time, in order for us to connect with someone, our hearts have to be open. We sometimes start often with our mind by seeing something quickly. You know, I, again, like I said, we determine whether or not we're going to watch, you know, or, or connect with someone within seven to eight, sen- eight to seven to eight seconds of meeting them personally. And you just said less than, you know, a minute or less or one second or less uh, if we're online. So um, how do we get our hearts open and get our minds off you know some of the past things that we've made judgments about that are keeping us apart from from connecting Mm -hmm. um so i have there's like a couple different ways to look at this but my favorite is to start off with a a quote from the movie fools rush in i don't know if you remember this is an older movie i do Matthew carey and salma hayek if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's so great. But they, they, it's, it's romance, it's a romantic comedy. But he says to her something that I have, I've, I remembered and I carry on with me every, everywhere. When he says, You're everything I never knew I always wanted. And I think that that's so true of what we, we should be looking for. We have these ideas of what people should, how people should be, and not really thinking about, well, what does, God have for me so that I can, you know, for the sake of my entire life, you know, like, what, is it, what am I going to look like? Who am I going to be, you know, in 10 years? And how is this person going to impact who I am and what I'm about? And so I, we really have to, and part of the conditioning piece is we have to teach ourselves to give people a second look. And so I um, tell people- Say that one more time, because that's really important. We have to teach ourselves to take a second look, right? Yes. yes. Teach ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Great statement. Yeah. Yes. And so um, how I teach people to do that is that we have to go, I'm trying to encourage people. So when you are looking, when you see somebody and you're trying to decide if they're, if they're dateable, you have one of three responses to them. Okay. You either have the response of, um, yes, I want to kiss their his face off. No, <laughs> like the idea of kissing him makes me want to run away. And then there's neutral, right? There's that in-between ground where it's, you know, and it, it's the neutral places where you have to lean in a little bit and go, okay, I need to take a closer look at this person. And so it's really bringing a very practical way of, of conditioning our, like changing our condition to go, okay, I need to look again here, but having that thought of going, okay, they're not, I don't see them as like, wow, right away, but now I'm going to take another look because there could be something. So I'll stop there. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, what brings to mind too is again, staying open, you know, the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So, you know, letting our mind be open to our heart being open to this person and not shutting them down from the very beginning. And I love that you talk about this neutral position that, that we would take, because often, you know, I think about my own relationship with my husband. I mean, he was not the person I would have chosen at all from the very beginning. Um, we, you know, we sat next to each other at a, when we were in college together at a Vespers the first night. And um, he remembers me as this, you know, 
cute little thing. And I just thought he was another guy, you know, I didn't, was not paying attention. And, um, you know, I won't tell the whole long story of our courtship, but it took me a while to actually realize this was somebody I actually could connect with. I just didn't find him attractive to, to begin with. And uh, I think that's just such wise um, counseling that we do need to take that moment um, to take a second look. I laughingly talk about singles um, that the Seinfeld series um, had has actually changed many of the millennials view view of dating because, you know, the Seinfeld series was all about trying to find that perfect connection and that perfect person. But there was always something wrong with them. They had their earlobe was too long or they had, you know, uh, their their pinky finger was too short or he had a beard or she had red hair and, and he, you know, we only date long man hands. Yes. Man hands. Yes. There was always something wrong. And so that was the whole series. And we, you know, I think it almost trained the millennial generation, the 30, 40 somethings now to think, gosh, you know, I've got to find that perfect person. I, you know, I, you know they're just not out there for me. So, um, and that, yeah. And that's me. That does speak to our, our cultural conditioning. And, um, Another thing I'm really, and I, this is lovely because I get to speak to all women, which um, a lot of times I, I'm in co-ed groups, but um, with women, especially one thing I'm noticing that um, our expectations are a little, might not serve, be serving us well is so many women are looking for a man who has got, I hear this all the time from women, um, who has got all their stuff figured out. Like emotionally, they're they've done the emotional work. I hear that all the time from women, and um, and so they they put this expectation on. So they're looking for a guy who is who has done all the work, and um, because because women have, right? Women have done the work. We've been doing the work, and that and women are really having a, a beautiful moment in our culture, right? Kind of coming into all these things. But um, I have to keep reminding women, like men, men have not had the invitation or the opportunity to consider their own emotional growth into the last maybe five to 10 years. Like it's just becoming something. And so um, we, we have to make space for that. Like if you're, if you're waiting for a man who has all his stuff figured out, you're going to be waiting a while because they're just now getting a chance. And so you have to make a choice. And so this is part of like rewiring how we think like, What's more important to you? Do you want to be with somebody who, you know, do you want to be in a partnership? Do you want to get married? Do you want to have a family? Um, and then if you do, you need to think about where guys are right now. And it's more about where they're going. Like, what is the posture towards what they're going are, you know, than where they are right now. And I think that that's one thing women can really open themselves up to it's, it's not so much about where a guy is right now but where is which direction is he is he walking towards like does he care is he acknowledging that he had you know those kind of things I'm noticing with women especially yeah yeah and and talk for a minute too one thing that I have been reading about and seeing statistics about is the number of men who are being distracted with video games and with sporting uh, things and stuff and just not wanting to deal with that emotional connection and those hard questions of where am I going and what am I doing? Because, you know, they're too busy with their face in a screen playing a video game or going to, a, you know, the sporting event or, you know, doing some kind of online betting or or something like that. So, and, and of course, you know, the, the pornography issue was still very huge out there for men who would just rather get their, you know, sexual connection through that. Um, how is, how, how is the, how is that affecting, um, our dating situation and our connection situations? Um, it, it, that is, that is a significant cost we are, we are paying right now in dating. Um, and it's a, across the board because there, we are coming from a place where there, it was easy to escape. So you didn't have to have hard conversations. You didn't have to, you know, like get deep with people. You, it didn't have to be messy. It's really easy to look at pornography, right? And then be able to 
go out into your and not have to deal with the messy emotional parts of you know what sexuality should be and so it's it's everywhere and so i actually one have you heard of the um the reality show love is blind yes of course yeah Oh my goodness. That actually, I, that's, um, was one of the inspirations for how, for my, my, um, dating service and how we do things, because what I discovered was if you notice watching love is blind, these people who are all the, all of those things that you're talking about, right? Like they've been, they've grown up with their, their faces on their phones and they haven't learned how to have deep conversations. So they get thrown into the situation where they have no phones and they, all they can do is have conversations with them. They have to talk to each other. Yeah. And they have these amazing, like, like deep conversations and these amazing connections. And it was fascinating to watch that when they, they had these amazing, deep emotional connections, and then they got out into the real world and they didn't have the, the social wherewithal, like the ability the foundation, the structure to hold a connection like that, because yeah. they hadn't learned how to do that in the real world. And so everything, it all crashed and burned. And it, that was just so, and so there's, there's, yeah. we have a lot, there's a lot of healing and kind of rethinking how we do things. Now. And patience and patience with ourselves and with others to be able to work through some of those things and grow and mature um, and realize them, right. They have to, they have to be realized that that's what's happening. Yes. Um, let's let's talk for a minute too about past dating situations, past relationships, and how that affects um, our choices and our future ones. You know, I on I actually kind of use the cell phone um, as a as a, an example. You know, I I if I keep my cell phone full of past messages and data on my cell phone, it slows down. It slows down my ability for connection. So, you know, what about our past experiences with relationships and how has that, how does that keep us slowed down from actually delving into new relationships? Mm -hmm. um, it's funny that you use the cell phone, which I think is such a great analogy. Um, I use, I like to call these things in the rocks in our pockets. Um, so I always like to talk about how, okay, when you, you were created to walk a certain way. Like you were just, you were created with a walk and that was what, you know, if you just walk, that's what would happen. But what if you put a bunch of heavy rocks in your pocket and then you tried to walk, it would, it would change the way you walk. Right. And so for so many people, they have emotional, um, wounds from past relationships. There's a lot of just, um, what we call soul ties, which are the sexual relationships because Anytime you have sex with somebody, you are creating a soul tie with that person. Um, and so we, we're carrying all these rocks around in our pocket. And so we have to, two things. One, we have to recognize and acknowledge that we, we are carrying these rocks in our pocket. So it's changing the way we walk, meaning it's impacting how we date, right? So our baggage is impacting how we date. That's step one, just to acknowledge that and start to pay attention to that. Step two is to get rid of the rocks in your pocket mm -hmm, and good. that is everything to do yep. with allowing the lord to to really heal and free you from that stuff so yep. there's some specific work around that, that absolutely i love that analogy and, and it's slowing you down and keep and holding you back yeah. um you know i loved what you said too about um your sexual connections that how it affects your future connections you know there's been a lot of recent research being done by uh, scientists and psychologists on you know our constant hookups so to speak with you know uh, you know in the dating situation and that each of those hookups those e sexual encounters those um you know, times where you're just, you know, sleeping with somebody, you know, that you just met, so to speak, how that actually really affects your brain and it's affecting your depression. It, 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 you become more depressed. Um, it's almost like, you know, trying to find that perfect connection in sex and then realizing after each encounter that it's just not going to happen because it was never set up for that to happen. Um, and it's just, it pulls you further and further away. It, again, it goes back to, I think, to what I was talking about earlier, the hardening of your heart. Um, you get, you know, 
you, your heart just hardens toward any kind of lasting relationship then life just becomes more meaningless um, because it's just about having the sexual encounter um you know the bible talks about in romans 12 too that we're not to be conformed to the patterns of this world but transformed by the renewal of our minds so again i go back to what we talked about earlier it's thinking different it's making different choices it's allowing us not to have the world tell us what's going to make us happy and that we have to you know connect with someone or hook up with someone sleep with someone move in with someone um in order to find that happiness and that con con contentment um how do we go about trying to make to make those changes. Do you have some secrets for us and some tips? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes, oh, there's so much, there's so much. Um, so first of all, I think the first thing is to recognize that we were not created by God to have multiple sexual partners. And so it wasn't, it's not as like, it's just, it's just not how he created us. And so, because if you look in, um, in First Corinthians in the message version says, for sex is more than just skin on skin. It's as much spiritual mystery as it is physical fact. I love that. Yes. And it's, that's so powerful because it's so true because there, there is not, there is a spiritual, a soul aspect to when you have sex with somebody. And so every time that's that idea of soul tie is every time you, you have sex with somebody, it's, it's literally, there is a tie now a soul tie between you and that other person. And the more of those you do, the more it paralyzes you because you're connected in all these different places. And so, so part of that is, is it's soul care and soul work. Um, you know, that verse in Romans you talk about is, you know, be transformed, um, is through, it's not through our actions, um, that verse says through the power of the Holy spirit mm -hmm. and all of these things that, you know, anytime you have emotional wounds or, you know, soul ties or sexual things that are, are kind of keeping you tied up there is, that's where the image, there's an invitation for the Holy spirit to change those. I, I use the, I use the phrase, um, a trans transformative mindset. Okay. So we have, um, in our culture, we operate from, we are, so we're made up of, as humans, we are made up of three parts. We've got our bodies, our souls, and then our spirit there. So if you think of, I like to think of it in like three circle, like circles and you get the body and then you have the soul and then you have the spirit. Okay. Most of us, are operating outside in, which means that we are allowing all of the external circumstances of our lives to impact our soul, which is where our, our emotions and our personality are. And so what we are invited to is we are invited to rather than living outside in, we're invited to look inside out, which means allow the spirit to do the work and impact your soul, which impacts your external world. And so when we're trying to get out of emotional baggage or, or, um, connection, sexual connections with people, it's asking the Holy Spirit to transform that thing, whatever it is, and to turn it into something that is of God and holy. And so it's, it's handing it over and saying, okay, here, here is this, I, I confess this to you. I give this to you. And then, um, Lord, what, what do you want to transform it into? What, what is freedom that's going to come from it? So it's the transformative mindset of like taking these things, allowing the Lord to transform them them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You know, I often call it mind. You called it soul. I call it mind. Mm -hmm. I call it uh, body, mind, spirit, um, because our soul and our spirit really is in many ways one and the same. You know, I've done, I've been doing a lot of reading on um, what happens to us when we die recently. And I guess maybe it's because of the age I am. I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, how many years do I have left on this earth? What can I accomplish? You know, what's going to, what kind of legacy am I going to be leaving? Mm -hmm. And so I've been kind of reading and studying more about, you know, what happens when you do really die. And um, some of the people that seem to have a lot of wisdom on this that I've been reading about a lot of the psychologists, Christian psychologists, and um, some real, uh, some pastors and people um, talk about the mind and that, that the mind and the soul really are 
the thing, it's really the thing that's going to continue on. Your mind will be that thing. So what we put in our mind right now, what we feed our mind right now, that's actually going to be, I believe, with us through eternity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm often asking my own self, what are the things I'm feeding into my mind? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we just don't think about that as much. It's just too easy for us to plan our face in a screen or get distracted today because we have so many visual things happening around us. We've got to get out and do something. We've got to be, you know, involved in something. We've got to be watching something. Um, and, and so we're letting our minds get distracted from what really is important and what we should be focusing on. Uh, you know, for me specifically, you know, I'm an advocate for us getting back in the word, getting mm-hmm. back into the, into our prayer, um, time with the Lord and really engaging with him. He's the one we're going to be with in, with in turn for eternity. Do we know him? Are you going to recognize Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, when you, you know, leave this land and will that mind be in you that will, was in Christ Jesus so that you'll actually recognize him. You know, I often say we come into the world single and we're going to leave this world single, but it'll, we, but we have to uh, uh, look at things a bit differently. We have to be able to change our minds a little bit. Let's talk for a minute now too, Jody, about prayer. You know, um, my mom told me growing up constantly that she was praying for my husband. And I always wondered about that. And I wondered, okay, who, who exactly is she praying for? You know, and is her prayer going to be the same as my prayer? <laughs> so so how, does, how do we pray for our contentment right now in where God has us, but also keep praying for that certain person that God may have for us? Do you have some wisdom on that? Mm-hmm. Yes and no. <laughs> uh, you know, because prayer is such an interesting, I think that we seasonally, there's sometimes when it feels like a good, the right thing to be praying for a person. And then there's other times when it feels like we shouldn't be praying for a person. We should be praying for contentment where we are. And so um, that's really that's a hard question to answer, you know, like a blanket way of praying. I think what's maybe more helpful um, is to um, consider when you said about being single, you know, and how we, you know, this, what we put on, you know, that we, we're going to, we're going to be single when we, we get here and when we leave and then there's marriage in between. And then going back to what we talked about in the beginning about how single is a bad word. Part of this is, we need to rethink what is the purpose for marriage and what is, and through by extension, the purpose for dating, because we have a tendency to, and this is why, how it impacts our prayer life. We have a tendency to think of marriage as a solution Mm. in our lives. Like it's going to be a solution that it's going to make things better. Once I find my person, like everything will make sense. Right. And so so when in reality, and those anybody who's been married for a hot minute, right, will tell you that um, it it's it's not a solution. It actually <laughs> it's right. I like my best friend and I who have been knowing each other since we were sixteen, and we got married the same. We both got married when we were twenty nine. So we had we lived some years where we were like, where is he? And then we got married, and now we've both been married sixteen years, and we're like okay, they don't tell you this, but marriage is actually not better. It's just different Mm -hmm. in terms of like what you're going through. And so because, so marriage not being a solution because marriage is a magnifier. It magnifies all the things that are already going on. And so, um, which is good and bad because there's things that get magnified like your baggage or the heart, you know, but also what gets magnified in marriage, which I think is a good part is our need for God. We, when you get married, you have no, there's no place to hide who you really are. Right. And so you, you, you come, you come face to face with what kind of person you really are and your need for the Lord grows because you realize you can't do it on your own. And that is, 
a huge part of what marriage was created for. Yes, it's for procreation and companionship and to be, you know, a, a, a symbol of Christ in the church, but it's also the greatest tool God uses for our sanctification, meaning it's, it's right. where we learn to live out our, what does it mean to be full, you know, to allow the Lord to fill you up. And so coming all that back around to the prayer piece, so I don't know if the prayer is like, sure, it's great to pray for your, your husband. It's great to, to not pray for your husband and just pray for contentment. But really the prayer should be, Lord, what, what are you trying to invite me into right now where I am so that I may experience the fullness that Jesus promised in John 10, 10. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That means right now, that means in dating. Yeah. You can find fullness. And so that's kind of maybe where we need to shift our, the way we pray about this kind of thing. Yeah. It's finding our identity first in him, mm -hmm. in ourselves and in him first, because we're never going to be content until we do that first. And we can never really stay contented with someone else until we have that basis and that foundation within ourselves. It's almost like um, that you know the bottom core of who we are has to be addressed first in order for us to be healthy in a relationship with someone else and knowing who we are and knowing who we are in him so well it uh we want to bring in some great questions that are happening in our chat room so i'm going to bring gene in right now hi gene how are you I'm great. How are you guys? It's been wonderful. Well, I know how you are. I've been listening. <laughs> it's been great. And we've had such a lively, a little bit of a lively um, webinar chat and great questions. So I'm going to bring in um, Anne. Anne, are you available to uh, speak here and ask your question? Good, These good. are the, the, yeah, this goes to the practical side. Um, I'm going to see if Anne is willing to pop in. If not, let's see. We're, we've been doing these live uh, chats where people can pop in and actually ask a little themselves. So it's kind I of love it. Hi, Anne. Anne, you need to unmute yourself. If you would like to ask. If not, I don't want to put you on the spot. I can totally ask your question. <laughs> okay. And this is a great question. I think it gets back to being in the world, not of the world. And, um, and nowadays, so we, it's hard to tell the difference between a Christian male or Christian female and their dating habits because of they're so similar. So how should someone deal with dating that hasn't had sex with anyone, but even Christian guys are pressuring you to go further than you want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to know why you're saying no, first of all. And not just because like, what, what is the purpose and the reason why you don't want to have sex? Um, and because it's not how you were created, it's not how anybody was created. Um, and so what's really weird about our culture right now is how unhappy everybody is like silently and secretly. Um, all these people who have been, you know, who people who've been ha out there having all the sex because that's what like the 90s and the 2000s encouraged like okay go out there and live you know this cult it was like almost a pushback to the purity culture that happened and it's like well we're going to rebel because it, it, we're trying to separate you know people are trying to separate their their faith from the the kind of the the rules and regulations that were placed upon them and so there's a lot of people that are kind of pushing back on that and so um for you to know why you you want to wait is important and to know that that's actually what's like best for everyone. Um, I, and I have to tell you, okay, so I, I realized this was a really big deal and that this was a big deal for everybody. Cause I used to think it was just women who were just, you know, like it was the women who really couldn't have sex before we got married. Cause we get, we emotionally involved. Okay. Here's the thing. I, when I was in my twenties, I was in full-time ministry and I loved to dance. Okay. So I love to dance. So I'd go to the, like the club and I'd be at the club and I'd be my dancing. And then I would go over and I would be getting my diet Coke, um, from mostly cause it was cheaper, but I would have my diet Coke and some, you know, a guy would always like, as they do, he'd sidle up next to me like, Hey, what's up? And I'd be like, Hey, how's it going? And he would ask me what I did for a living. And I was like, Oh, I tell teenagers about Jesus's love for them. And you would think that that would really throw people off, but 
it didn't. These guys were like, they leave, they're like, really? And then no lie within five minutes, every single one of them, it led to the conversation, the question. So does that mean that you don't? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I'm waiting till I get married. And here's the part that just blew my, and like completely changed my perspective on this whole thing. I, how many conversations I got into with slightly intoxicated men where they were with just enough to be truthful. And they would, they were just pouring out their hearts and like how the, the regrets that they had, their first loves that all the, the stuff mm. that they carried. And it really changed how I'm like, whoa, this is, this is a big deal for everybody. And so we've, we've, we've covered it up really well. Um, but at its heart, like it's not what's best for anybody's heart. And so having that mentality makes it a little easier, I think, when we go into these situations. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree. I think some for so long we've had this thing about women feeling pressured because guys are wanting to, you know, throw them in the in the bed. But it's really the the guys too have felt the horrific pressure that they've got to prove their manliness or they've got to prove, you know, that they, you know, you know, can get a girl and that that's how they're going to prove and getting a girl is taking them to bed. They don't want to do that either. And so they've been under as much pressure as the women. And, and we haven't really talked much about that really. No. Yeah. It's, I always say that for, for women, um, you know, when we, they're, for us, it's tied up in our, our worth. For men, it's tied up, it's their character. Mm. Um, and so when they're having, you know, and that's not, it takes away from each person. Um, now there, so now I'm, but now I'm going to give a little bit of, to the women. Like, let's talk women. Okay. We need to stop saying yes. That's the thing. Like everyone is there. Everyone is, there's a lot of pressure. Yes. But men truly we get to set, we get to set the tone, um, mm -hmm. when it comes, when it comes to sex. And if more people started saying no, mm -hmm. it would change things. Mm -hmm. And so, cause we really do. And I don't mean like power. It sounds so like, Oh, woman in power. I don't mean it like mm -hmm. that, but really men are learning from women. We do actually have the power to say no and to change the way we, things are, are culturally how we are doing things, but women need to say no and like yeah. say it with fierceness and like power, right? Like, no, for everybody's sake, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, good yeah. for you. Yes. Good. So we have some more questions and I know our time is getting short here. So I wanna get to it. A lot of it is practical um, questions. So there are a lot of women in churches right now that are single. Um, uh, it's almost like there's a dating freeze. So what are some practical things single women can do when they aren't being pursued or asked out on dates by men? And you, so, you know, let me do a two part because it's not part of the question, but if they aren't around in churches, what do you think about going outside of the church who potentially non-Christians? Who, who, who may not be believers, you know, let's go like a bigger pool because we can just meet Christians at church, but if they're all taken, you're not being, and, or they're single, they're not being pursued. What can, what can women do? And then I have another question. So, okay. I'm going to try to answer really fast. <laughs> um, uh, church is a terrible place to try to get a date, <laughs> which is so sad because it shouldn't be, but because nobody wants to to look desperate or nobody wants to like rock the boat. And so part of it is stop worrying about rocking the boat. Who cares? Like, just get, like, just get out there. Every, you're, you want to date. Okay. So um, a little of it is everyone's too scared to date at churches. And so we just don't do it. And so um, you, if, you, if there's somebody at church who you are interested in, you should ask them out. And yes. I'm not saying, like, here's the thing, men want, and it's part of how they're wired to pursue a hundred percent. Like, I'm not saying that women should be the pursuers and go up, but sometimes they just need a little bit of it, like a, a thumbs up, right? Like, okay, okay. Yeah, poke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so it's, it's okay for you to ask them out, um, and to do that and to get that ball rolling. So they know that's happening. Okay. So that's one thing because okay. I need to talk about believers versus non-believers, um, here, Jody, real quick. Yeah. Can you yeah. touch upon how do you let someone know in church that you're interested? Like, is there a godly flirting tip that you can give one or two? Like, <laughs> yes. How do you flirt in a godly way? 
Like let okay. them know you're interested. Let me share my Bible with you. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, that's lovely. But I was actually practicing this with my 13 year old daughter. Okay. This is the, we have forgotten the art of flirting. And so you yes. want to start, but what you need to do, this is very practical, work on making eye contact and a, a, a flirty smile. Like, Show us a flirty smile. Well, hey, how are you doing? Well, no, just, like, <laughs> you know, just a little bit of like a, whatever it is, you know, like, <laughs> when you're, when you're, but it, even it's just, or even it's just rather than, because think about it culturally, when you make eye contact with somebody, especially in a church setting, this is what happens. Like, you're like, <laughs> yeah, we, so we yeah. need to, we need to start thinking like, no, exactly. I'm going, I'm going to hold it for a second. So if there's a cute boy, I'm interested, I'm going to hold it for a second. So I'm making eye contact and then look away. And the next time make eye contact, smile a little bit, truly. And it's something you, you have to practice it because if you just, you're going to like, yeah. we're, our, they're all, we're always like, like we wouldn't do it well without practice, <laughs> you gotta practice but you got to practice that and have that mentality going into those places. Okay. Okay. Um, I really want to hit on the believers versus yeah. not believers. Do, that's do, do, do good. Huge, huge. Um, especially in our culture right now. Okay. We are in, even as it's the church, we are in a really weird spot where people are really trying, there's so, you know, like there's, there's faith deconstruction and we're trying to work through all these things and people's relationships with the church is very complicated, understandably. And so people are, are question can be questioning things. They can be doubting things. They can be going through things. I think we need to be okay with that. Like you, a guy might not be like going to Bible study every week and, you know, like going to church because it might be kind of complicated for him. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a huge difference between somebody who has surrendered their life to Jesus at some point in time, which means that they have surrendered their life, which means they, the Holy Spirit is now sealed within them and offers accountability and opportunity for growth that never goes away versus someone who's never surrendered their life to Jesus. And that's a much harder sell. So I would say, so that's kind of my, where I would say you don't date somebody who has not surrendered their life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, but give, it's not going to work, is it? No, that's, it just no. won't. It's just yeah. too, yeah, it's, that's just it's, too big of a, too much, yeah, based, so. you know, unyoked. Yes, but make, it's okay to make some space for someone. Again, it's about, it's so much more important. Where are they going yeah. rather than where are they at right now? So where are they trying to pursue their faith in Jesus and they're mm -hmm. trying to work it out? That's, that's what's important. Or do they um, have an interest and a curiosity about it even? You know, I mean, that is important, I, I think, as well, when looking at someone who's not a believer, um, are they the remotely even interested in that? Because that's mm -hmm. the most important thing in your life. If it it, it should be, at least, is, yeah. is, the, is your relationship. So, yeah, I would, okay. I would say far, far away from that fire. Um, <laughs> even if they're just interested in Jesus, you don't, you don't want to have to be the one to like, you could try that. And then 20 years later, you're fighting over why you want to take your kids to, <laughs> yes, you know, exactly. Like, yeah. So exactly. if you can, if you can, sometimes we fall and there's, you, you got it. But if you have any ability, don't well, do speaking more Doesn't about just dating, you know, dating a person rather not marrying them, but at least having, you know, if, if you're going to be dating them, if they have an interest at least and have that conversation, have, have conversations. You've got to have those conversations. Have yeah. yeah. So it's interesting that you say dating. So I have, I have a lot of daughters, but two of them are very different than their dating uh, adventures. One of them dates to get married, like dating with a purpose. You know, if that's not the one I'm, I'm like gone. The other one is currently dating for fun. So it's a very different approach. And so there's a difference with, with courtship and dating. We're not going to have time to talk about that. But let's get back to sexuality. <laughs> uh, I have a question here. What is a healthy time to talk about sexual past? For example, if we already know we don't want to date someone who has struggled with porn, uh, porn addiction, not someone who occasionally watched porn, it's so, it's so prevalent now. You know, it's just even on prime time. So porn... Um, so this would be, I guess, hard porn, not someone who occasionally watched in the past, but actual addiction. It seems like uh, this should be brought up early. 
right? Or finding out if someone does not see an issue with masturbating or porn in general. So when is it, it I, I think and practically speaking, how much time should we, so single women give to be patient and da, 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 once we find out, do we run away like the Dickens or we should never blind ourselves by thinking we can change a person. I know that much. No, and yeah, so um, you don't, you don't want to do it too early because there's not, you don't have the, the emotional structure to hold a conversation like that. If you have it too early, you stunt any, a lot of your potential to, to connect and emotionally grow together. And mm -hmm. so you have to, and so that's what they, it cracks me up when people go on the first date and they're like, okay, <clears throat> here is my list. Is this, this, this? <laughs> like people really do that. And I'm like, you can't do that because there's no, there's just there. You, you can't hold, there's nothing to hold that with. There's no, there's mm -hmm. no laughter. There's no humor. There's no being able to see like even someone with a porn addiction, man, how do you know they haven't found great freedom and, you know, reconciliation with the Lord that has completely transformed their mm -hmm. relationship, you know, like, so there, there's things in here. I wouldn't necessarily say, well, why would you say, you know, no to, to somebody who had that in the past without yeah. knowing more about what's happening. Right? right. But as soon as you hit, there's something where you're like, this is like big red flag. You, you don't, I always say, I, I like to use a flag system. Okay. When I go, when I send people on dates. So you are looking for, when you go on a date, you, you kind of have a, a list of things that are important and our list should probably be a much shorter than we think it is. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, and then we go, okay, what about this one? Yes or no, or you don't know if it was, a, if it was a yes, green flag, if it was a no red flag, if you don't know, it's a yellow flag. Okay. So anything that is a yellow flag that you don't really know, or you're like, oh, he might've mentioned something about porn. You'll need to follow up on that later. Right. And so you want to get to where you have to get. And when you get three red flags, you out. Mm. Don't wait around. Like that's, you know, three red flags, go. So yeah. you don't have to wait around for that to like, oh, eventually they'll figure it out. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I think we're okay. out of time. Okay. Literally, yeah, we are. I was just going to say yeah. our time is always but, too short. Yes. I was going to okay. say, good news. Jody's going to be offering a, a mentorship. So, uh, so make sure you keep on touch in, in touch with the influence women. And we have a drawing, right? Yes. So do the drawing. Let's see who won that free uh, new mentorship coming up. Right. Look, I'm shaking it up. Shaking up okay. the names. <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. Da, da. It is Yell's, Yell, sorry, if I don't say this name right. Yell is uh, Vita Sergi. Okay. I'm let you talk. <laughs> Go ahead. There you are. Hello, Phyllis Vita. Can you tell us how to say your name? <laughs> you can unmute yourself. Uh, okay. Well, we will get your email. Oh, there she yes. is. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Yelisa Vita. Yelisa Vita. Oh, that sounds better. Yelisa Vita. Beautiful. Beautiful. Name. Yes. <laughs> What Congratulations. country are you from? Where are you from? You. I was born in Russia and I was raised in Pennsylvania. Wow. Beautiful name. Gorgeous name. Well, congratulations. Thank you. If you will send us an email at info at influencewomen.org and send us your information, then we will send you the information on how you can get connected and sign up for the upcoming uh, mentorship. We'll be, begin on August 21st. Um, creating with God's infusion. So we hope that that will be a blessing to you. It's a six week series for one hour. And if uh, there are other listeners and watchers uh, uh, tonight, we would love to have you join us as well. Um, Amanda is an amazing woman and you're just going to love um, how she has kind of uh, shaped this uh, mentorship so that you can think differently and grow differently and be more creative in what you do and all the, you know, all the artistic things. Jean, thank you so much for being a part of our chat room tonight. And Jody, of course, um, we are so grateful and thankful for all of your wisdom and knowledge. And we're looking forward uh, for you doing your next mentorship with us as well. So we'll be, we'll be watching for that. Um, Again, I just want to remind our viewers about our upcoming August 28th um, 
Inspire event in Hollywood. Also save the date for September the 30th here in Hollywood. We're going to have a big professional event here, a big brunch uh, event. Again, we have three outstanding women coming and uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So please uh, mark that in your calendars. Also on September 5th is our Bible study. We'll start again and we'll be studying Elijah. It's going to be totally interactive. So get your colored crayons out and uh, or uh, gel markers. Um, we're going to be creative as we study the life of Elijah and what he can teach us for today and um, and where we are at our work and our careers. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again for the next webinar on August 1st, again with Amanda Mees. And we know, uh, again, that many of you are struggling out there with these strikes, but we're praying for you. Know that. We're holding you up and we love and care about you. Have a great evening. And thanks again, Jody and Kristen. And thanks, Caitlin, for being in our tech room tonight. So appreciate all of you. Yay. God bless you all and good night.